it's not that um, pseudoscience and superstition and uh, new age so-called beliefs and uh, fundamentalist zealotry are something new. They've been with us for as long as we've been, we've been human. But we live in an age based on science and technology with formidable technological powers. Science and technology are propelling us forward at accelerating rates. That's right. And if we don't understand it, by we, I mean the general public, if it's something that, oh, I'm not good at that, I don't know anything about it, then who is making all the decisions about science and technology that uh, are going to determine what kind of future our children live in? What's the danger of all this? I mean, you know, this is not the thing. That... There's two kinds of dangers. One is what I just yeah. talked about, that we've arranged a society based on science and technology in which nobody understands anything about science and technology. And this combustible mixture of ignorance and power, sooner or later, is going to blow up in our faces. And the second reason that I'm, I'm worried about this is that science is more than a body of knowledge. It's a way of thinking, a way of skeptically interrogating the universe with a fine understanding of human fallibility. If, if we are not able to ask skeptical questions, to interrogate those who tell us that something is true, to be skeptical of those in authority, then we're up for grabs for the next charlatan, political or religious who comes ambling along. It, it's a thing that Jefferson laid great stress on. It wasn't enough, he said, to enshrine some rights in a, in a constitution or a bill of rights. The people had to be educated and they had to practice their skepticism and their education. Otherwise, we don't run the government. The government runs us. You see, people read the stock market quotations and financial pages. Look how complex that is. People are able to look at sports statistics. Look how many people can do that. Understanding science is not more difficult than that. It doesn't involve greater intellectual activities. But the, the thing about science is, first of all, it's after the way the universe really is and not what makes us feel good. And a lot of the competing doctrines are after what feels good and not what, what's true. Um, there are millions of people who understand science does not prove religion because religion is faith-based. Let's, look, let's look a little more deeply into that. What is faith? It is belief in the absence of evidence. Now, I don't propose to tell anybody what to believe, but for me, believing when there's no compelling evidence is a mistake. The idea is to withhold belief until there is compelling evidence. And if the universe does not comply with our predispositions, okay, then we have the wrenching obligation to accommodate to the way the universe I mean, I really is. So who is more humble? The scientist who looks at the universe with an open mind and accepts whatever the universe has to teach us, or somebody who says everything in this book must be considered the literal truth and never mind the fallibility of all the human beings involved in the writing of this book. I, uh, I lost both my parents about uh, 12 or 15 years ago and uh, I had a great relationship with them. I really miss them. I would love to believe that their spirits were around somewhere and I'd give almost anything to uh, spend five minutes a year with them. Do you hear their voices ever? Uh, sometimes. About uh, six or eight times since their death I've heard Carl, just, just in the voice of my father or my mother. Now, I don't think that means that they're in the next room. I think it means that in your <clears throat> I've had an auditory hallucination. I, I was with them so long, I heard their voices so often. Why shouldn't I be able to make a vivid recollection? Here's what's interesting about this for me. You convinced me a long time ago that it was arrogant for me or for anyone else to believe that there wasn't some life outside of our 
to exclude the possibility. To exclude the possibility was 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 to was an arrogance of intellect that we should not I still assume. Be. You couldn't prove it. You didn't know it was there. But the arrogance. For you. Right. We don't know if it's there. We don't know if it's not there. Let's look. And if you take that, mm -hmm. why can't you say there's a lot we don't know? There's I, I a say lot it. of power Here, there that we there's don't know. There's a lot we don't know. You know. I, I, that's what I believe about. But that a lot doesn't of mean stuff. that every every fraudulent claim has to be accepted. We we demand the most rigorous standards of evidence, especially on what's important to us. So if some guy comes up to me in a, a channeler or a medium and says, I can put you in touch with your parents. <laughs> well, because I want so terribly to, to believe that, yeah. I know I have to reach in for added reserves of skepticism because I'm likely to be fooled and, and uh, much more minor to have my money taken. You are living with Milo dysplasia. Or I have been. You have been. And just share with us, because of your, your sense of, of language and, and, and your sense of understanding and, and being reflective and introspective, what, this, what do you think about it? What does it do for you to I didn't to have, have any near-death say to you? I didn't no, have any near-death experiences. I, would, I didn't have a religious conversion. But, but you I thought about what it would be like to die. Certainly, and what it would be like for my, my family. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I didn't much think about what it would be like for me, because I don't think it's likely there's anything that you think about after you're dead. That's um, it. <laughs> yeah, long, dreamless sleep. I'd love to believe the opposite, but I don't know of any evidence. But one <laughs> thing that it has done is to enhance my uh, sense of appreciation for the, the beauty of life. life. Uh, and of the universe and the, the sheer joy of being alive. You had a healthy portion of that before this, but even you, it happens to you. Oh, there's no question. No, no question. Beauty, every moment, every, every inanimate object, uh, to say nothing of, of the exquisite complexity of, uh, of living beings, uh, yeah, uh, you, you imagine missing it all and suddenly it's so much more precious. <laughs>